Hey, Sun here. I'm a privacy and a security researcher, and you're watching The Privacy Guides. Uh, this episode is not about privacy or security. It's about how the USB protocol is confusing like crazy in the context of Macs and how not understanding those nuances had me brick my Samsung T7 Shield 4 terabyte hard drive, uh, freaking me out. Those devices are a few hundred bucks a pop, um, but I discovered why, and I also discovered a fix. I'm not alone. A lot of people are reporting similar issues on these devices. What happens essentially is if you fill them up to the brink, then delete a whole bunch of files, you might notice that performance is massively degraded and it just doesn't really improve over time. And that's what I experienced. This device I use for my video archive backups, but I also decided quite naively to use it to do the Bitcoin initial block download in the context of research for my episode on the Bitcoin node Ducker project. What happened is it ended up being maxed out, everything failed. Then what I discovered after deleting that whole IBD, it was about a terabyte, is that even though the device in the context of macOS showed it had a terabyte of free space, when I was trying to write video files to it, I was getting speeds between two and four megabits or megabytes, sorry, per second. Man, I thought I had bricked the device and ended up, you know, setting up a warranty claim between Samsung and Amazon uh, and they accepted to replace it. But I just felt uneasy about what was really happening under the hood because I had two of these devices and it just didn't make sense. And when I was trying to read data out of them, I was able to read data between eight and 900 uh, megabytes per second. So what I discovered um, is that macOS does not send trim commands to enclosures over USB-C 3.2 Gen 2. Trim commands are what is used to tell the firmware of those external storage devices that the NAND storage, or at least specific blocks of it, are now available to be rewritten to. There's a problem with all NAND storage whereby if you write data to the same block many, many times, that block will fail. As a result, contemporary SSDs have two interesting features. One is called wear leveling, and that means the firmware keeps track of which blocks have been used and how many times, and it will favor using blocks that have been never written to if available. Now, if all blocks have been written to, it needs to understand which blocks are now available to be rewritten to. And that is exactly what trim is used for. Trim is a command that will tell the firmware that a specific block is now available. Where leveling will still not use it if there are other blocks that have not been written to as many times, but it makes it very performant in the context of rewriting data when the entire hard drive uh, was maxed out. The other really interesting feature of these devices is, for instance, this is a four terabyte, but it likely has something called over-provisioning. Over-provisioning means that all of those devices have extra storage capacity that is not available to you and I, the user, but is available as some of the blocks will fail to make sure that it has a persistent four terabyte capacity over its expected lifespan. Now that I've said all of this stuff, well, if your Mac cannot send trim requests as a result, or tr trim commands as a result, well, when I deleted a terabyte of data, the drive itself was not even aware of it. Even if I would have formatted the drive on macOS, the drive itself would still think that all the blocks have been consumed. Then what happens when you try to write data to it is it then does some last minute garbage collection and tries to figure out which blocks it can write data to, and that results in the two to four megabytes per second write speeds. Um, the only way I was able to actually unbrick this device was to essentially connect it to a Mac that uh, I have, another Mac, and to use the Samsung Magician app to essentially secure erase the drive. That requires uh, lowering the security model of Mac to use, I think, third-party kernel extensions and stuff that you really don't want to do on your hardened Mac, but thankfully I had this other Mac, you know, kicking around. And once I secure erased the device, well, guess what? That was a way of sending trim commands because of that, I guess, kernel extension or whatnot. 
and then I was able to reclaim full speeds. Um, so what can you do about this? I mean, that means that this uh, charge device, which by the way is super cool with this uh, built-in cable and you know pass-through power delivery, this is a really cool device, which I love, but I am now using it mindfully knowing that if I max it out, I will likely have a pretty significant performance hit. So I'm not using it in a kind of reckless way. But some use cases require a device that can sustain its full performance over time, even if you fill it up, delete large data sets, fill it up again. And that is where um, this little device here really, really shines. This is the OWC Express 1M2. And the main difference between this device and say this one, they're both aluminum enclosures. They both handle heat dissipation quite well. Obviously this one with its insane fins is probably the most performant device uh, that exists on the market right now. But the main difference is it has a USB 4 slash Thunderbolt 4 interface. And that is really a game changer. I have it here connected to the Mac. And when I get the info from DiskUtil, you'll notice that it is using PCI Express. So it is establishing PCI Express lanes over USB-C. And this device here actually has trim support because it is operating over PCI Express. That means that when I delete large data sets from this device, the device itself, so the firmware, will receive those trim commands and will automatically flag those blocks as being reusable. And that means I will have sustained performance over a much longer period of time. So I hope that episode was insightful. If you're planning on maxing out SSD storage, you absolutely want an enclosure that supports Thunderbolt 4 or USB 4. If you're using USB-C uh, 3.2 Gen 2, uh, bear in mind that your drive will not receive trim commands, so its performance will probably decrease significantly over time. That's all I have for you today. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.